Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. It's all in the details. Often the difference between a good job and a really great job are the small finishing details that we take time to make. I have a saying that I'd tell my students when someone would moan about having to do extra handwork or if I even suggested making a handworked buttonhole, I'd tell them, you raised the sheep, you sheared the wool, you spun the yarn, grew and harvested the dye stuff to create the color, dyed the wool, designed the fabric, set up the loom, and wove the fabric. Why would you want to cut corners and take the easy way out now? As hand weavers, it's all about process. Even the most challenging thing in garment making can be achieved with practice. With that said, one of my pet peeves when I judge fashion shows featuring hand woven garments is seeing a closure that uses snaps. Before you start writing letters, I'm a big fan of snaps. I use them a lot. Snaps are the hot closure for garments at the moment. Why do I get peeved? Because the maker of the garment didn't take the extra step to cover them. Covering a snap is one of the least challenging couture techniques in sewing. I'm going to show you how to cover snaps of any size, but First, we need a vocabulary lesson. This is a snap. It has two parts. The two parts fit snugly together to hold a garment together. The two halves are identified by typical terms used in hardware stores, building trades, and a host of other applications. This is the mail. And this is the female. Yes, that's really how the two parts are identified. I'll leave it to your imagination as to how they work. Snaps can come in many sizes. Snaps can support inside areas that aren't defined by buttons, as in this jacket. Snaps can be the discrete closure behind a row of trim, as in this jacket. Snaps can be hidden behind a wonderful button, so you don't actually have to make a buttonhole. And yes, there is a correct way to place the snaps, one that's easy to remember. Always remember that the male half of the snap comes towards the female half when closing the garment. The female half is closest to the body. So let's talk about how to cover them. You'll need a really fine fabric for this part. A five mommy weight silk habitat works well, or a china silk, even organza will work. The fabric you cover the snaps with needs to be very fine, so the snap halves can still come together. Silk can be dyed with fiber reactive or acid dyes, and RIT is always an option since it contains both. To cover the snaps, cut a circle of fine fabric about two and a quarter times the diameter of the snap. I've used a little template here, and just as a tip, work in metric, it's so much easier to multiply these things. Hand baste around the perimeter of each circle, leaving the needle still attached. Use a stiletto or awl or a point of small scissors to pierce a hole in the middle of one of the circles. How big a circle that you need to pierce depends on the size of the snap. Use this circle for the male snap. Work the male end of the snap through the middle and begin to draw up the basting thread. Pull the basting thread tight around the back of the snap and secure with the long tail from the basting thread. 
The female part of the snap gets a cover as well. No need to poke a hole in the middle unless the snap is really large. And then you'll kind of have to use the awl to get it started. Force the male end of the snap into the female end and they should lock together. To sew the snaps onto the garment, start with regular sewing thread, doubled. Put both ends through the needle, ending up with four threads. Pass the four threads through a cake of beeswax, not the end. Bury the knot underneath the snap. Come up in one of the four or six openings around the perimeter of the snap. Of course, you won't be able to see the openings because they're now covered with silk. Having an uncovered snap to look at may help. Do your best to fish around the edge until you find an opening. Bring the waxed thread up through the opening in the snap and back down, repeating this step for two to three passes, depending on the size of the snap. Slip underneath the fabric and come up in the next opening. Repeat attaching the snap with two to three passes of the thread. Keep moving around the snap until all the openings are attached. Knot the thread and bury the knot by passing the needle under the snap. Cut the thread. Remember, the female attaches to the body, the male is attached to the underside of the top layer and comes in towards the female part of the snap. I used a covered snap to hold the underlay of this handwoven double-breasted jacket with a felted collar in place. Incidentally, the buttons were created in a similar fashion. I used a really large two inch or five centimeter flat disc button with holes in the center and treated it as if it were a snap, except I used a scrap of the felt laminate I made for the collar. I cut a disc of the felt two and a quarter times the diameter of the button, hand stitched a line of basting around the perimeter and drew it up closed around the button, bringing the drawn up edge to the front side of the button, adding a couple of beads to create a look similar to the collar. Remember, felt doesn't ravel. Sewing the button on was a bit of a challenge because the holes in the middle of the button were covered by the felt. But I kept poking until I found the holes and then carefully attached the buttons. To support such a large button, I actually used another button underneath. So the fabric became a sandwich between the inner button and the large one. Covering buttons is a great way to get a custom look, especially when you need multiples and you just don't have or can't find the perfect button. I talked about this coat called Leaves and Berries in a recent Monday Mini and showed that I took the handmade felt scraps from a bag project and used them to create covered buttons. Here, I use the handwoven fabric to replicate the X's of the band covering a series of buttons which blended in well on a busy garment that had lots going on. And in this reversible vest with huge amounts of detail, I covered the buttons for the linen front with the handwoven fabric and I covered the buttons for the opposite side with linen from the front. Cover your own button kits are available from most big box stores. I've always used the one from Dritz. 
newer kits have an actual see-through plastic ring template for cutting the fabric with an open middle so that you know what design you'll have for the center of the button. Of course, I'm using my kit from about 40 years ago. Refills are obviously still available. Cut your disc of fabric using the template provided. If the fabric needs support to keep the metal of the disc from showing through, especially in a hand woven, interface just the part that will cover the top of the button. Do not interface all the way to the edge of the fabric. You'll need to keep the part of the fabric that goes around towards the back of the button as thin as possible. Place the circle of fabric face down into the little rubber holder that comes with the kit. Push the covered button blank face down into the back of the fabric circle. Push the extra fabric into the back of the button blank so it is all within the well of the button. Place the back of the button with the shank facing you onto the back of the button blank. Use the little push tool to help force the back of the button into the button blank. Sometimes with bulky fabrics, I use a hammer to give it a gentle whack. Pop out the button and sew it onto the garment. Just a tip, always make one or two extra and sew them discreetly into the interior of the garment, just in case. Celebrate your growing skills and cover your snaps. And don't forget you can custom cover buttons as well. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.